Good morning, beloved church. It's so good to be together with you virtually in worship. Let us call ourselves to the worship of God on this Ascension Sunday. Shout for joy. Sing songs of praise. For God reigns over all the earth. God has gone up with a shout. Sound the trumpets and sing songs of praise. Jesus tells us that repentance and forgiveness is to be offered in his name. Therefore, let us confess our sins to God, who assures us of new life through the power of Christ's redeeming love. Let us pray. Living God, we confess that sometimes our faith is weak. Our love for others can be faint. Our prayers are often timid. And our gratitude is frequently unconvincing. When we stand looking toward heaven, yet feel far away from you, you draw us near in mercy to forgive us and fill us with your power through the grace of Jesus, our resurrected Savior. Amen. Beloved, sisters and brothers, as Christ is our witness, God's power to pardon is immeasurable. Therefore, proclaim this good news to the ends of the earth. Through the mercy of Christ, our sins are forgiven. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, open our minds to see the power of Scripture give life. Enlighten our hearts that we might see Christ in all whom we meet. In the name of the one holy and living God to whom we give all glory. Amen. Our reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible is the conclusion of the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then Jesus opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So, stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then Jesus led them out as far as Bethany, and, lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them, and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him, and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. The grass withers, and the flowers fade, but the word of our Lord endures forever. There's been a, a meme that has been going around around pastor types about ascension. It's a picture of Jesus wearing a jacket and a tie and a shirt, and he's sitting in front of a computer, and it says, Ascension, 
the day when Jesus started working from home. Now I'll admit I found that kind of funny. It's a pastor joke. We all kind of think they're funny. No one else does, but that's okay. And Ascension is an interesting Sunday. It's one of my favorites. Usually Ascension actually falls on a Thursday. It was last Thursday. But because we as Presbyterians are not used to coming to church on Thursday nights, we come instead on the Sunday after and celebrate the Ascension. Now, the Ascension is, occurs after Jesus has done several things. He has um, been resurrected. He has appeared first to the women. He appeared to Cleopas and the other disciple along the road to Emmaus. He has come into the upper room among his gathered disciples. And the Ascension reminds us that Jesus dwells in, among, and through us. It's more than just geography. Interestingly also, Jesus talks to the disciples a little bit before we actually have the Ascension itself. In the first five chapters that David read today, or first five verses that David read today, Jesus interprets the scriptures for the disciples. Now, Jesus has been interpreting scriptures the whole time he was among them. But in interpreting the scriptures this time, he makes it known the continuity between the Old and the New Testaments, the continuity between the God who led the people out of Israel, the God of creation, the God of the prophets, the God of the Psalms, is the same God who has done this amazing thing with Jesus' resurrection. Jesus reminds the disciples yet again that he comes to fulfill the scriptures, not to revise them. So Jesus is an expansion, an inclusion of more people into the covenant, not a replacement for the people of Israel. And then Jesus tells the disciples something interesting. He says, you are witnesses to all of these things witnesses. The job of a witness is, the vocation of a witness is to share. And for Jesus, the disciples, their vocation is to share the good news that they have experienced. And he tells them, now it's a time of waiting. Wait in Jerusalem until you are clothed with the power from on high. Wait in this liminal time. Wait for instructions. Wait. Wait. Wait for an unspecified time. And we know that waiting is anxiety producing and uncomfortable. We know a lot about waiting. We knew about waiting before this pandemic. We knew how hard it is to wait for a, a diagnosis or to wait for the weather to clear so that crops can be put in, to wait for news from a family member who is abroad. And now we have been waiting. We have been waiting for an end a vaccination to take care of COVID-19. We're waiting for new information. We're waiting for connection. We're waiting for a return to normal. And we're inundated with conflicting messages all of the time. 
Yes, waiting is hard. And waiting is difficult. And we know how hard it was for the disciples to wait. But remember what Jesus said as he came into the upper room that day. Do not be afraid. Peace be with you. Now the disciples had every reason to fear. They had every reason to be a little nervous. Peter had denied Jesus three times. The others had run away. The women had despaired. And Jesus says, none of that matters. Do not be afraid. Peace be with you. Jesus lives out the embodiment of God's love and reminds them that death has no power over this love. Nothing, nothing at all can separate the disciples or any of God's people from the love that God has poured out, a love that conquers even death. And Jesus reminds them of this. He reminds them that location, or vocation is not dependent upon location. They're called. They're called to embody God's love. They're called to go forth. Now, one of the interesting things is with all of this pandemic going on, we've had a lot of discussion as to whether or not the church is closed. The building is closed right now. The church has never been closed. The church exists wherever the embodied love of Christ is. We've gathered digitally, and we've realized that we're reaching members of our family, our community, who are not with us geographically. Some are in other states or other countries. Some are gathering with us as they had gathered before. Some are gathering with us for the first time. And we're finding that worship is not bound by geography. Worship exists in new and powerful ways. And so we've learned to pray, both ancient prayers and new prayers. We've learned to sing in our own keys, in our own homes, in our own ways. We've recognized that we continue to care, to share our resources, to reach out, to consider the good of all people, not just ourselves. And in this liminal time, the spirit, which can be trusted, breathes new life into us and leads us to new and amazing places. The disciples were so filled with the spirit that they followed Jesus to Bethany. I remember Bethany is the home of Jesus' dear friends, Martha and Mary and Lazarus. And as the disciples are following there with Jesus, Jesus blesses them. And it's in this continual act, while he is still blessing them, Jesus ascends into heaven. That blessing, that blessing continues that blessing isn't an end point, but something that continually falls on the disciples. It lingers. And they're so filled with deep joy that they're continually giving praise and thanksgiving to God. My friends, on this Ascension Sunday, may we remember that God is still blessing us Though we are scattered, God unites us.
together. And when fear, anxiety, and sadness threaten to overwhelm us, God reminds us that God dwells within us, through us, and among us. God reminds us that the church has never stopped praying and that the Holy Spirit will continue to lead us into a future beyond what we can imagine. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together. We give thanks to you, O oh God, in this and every age, for the healing power at work in Christ to fill our word, world with grace. Pray for our world, for all leaders, people and nations, that we may exercise the spirit of wisdom as we serve the common good. Shield all who suffer from terrors of violence and war. Bring them to safety and new life in you. Make us one family gathered up in your love and clothed in the power of your peace. We pray for all who long to experience the immeasurable power of your love. Open our hearts to sing your praises and to share the story of your blessing, that all may come to know our living and ascended Christ. Bless your people everywhere with food, shelter, health care, and employment sufficient for our flourishing that all may thrive together by the riches, uh, rich, riches of your grace and fill us with a joy for justice that inspires us to do our part for the prosperity of all. We pray for all in sickness or in need that they may know your healing love and the power of Christ to bring life in the most difficult times. Keep us mindful of the hope and great power that we have in you as we offer your healing to others. We pray for all who have died, that together you will bring us to the glorious inheritance of Christ, the one who fills all and all. <coughs> all this we pray in the name of him who was raised to live and reign in power for us, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, our Father, Our Father who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we prepare to wind down the Easter season, we will pray the following doxology. Pray God for our no, 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 no. blessings no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead and finish it. creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. As I've often been taught, liturgy means work of the people, and work of the people sometimes has unexpected surprises. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> God's Spirit is poured out upon us to make our hearts strong with love, bold with praise, that we may proclaim God's Son's love to the ends of the earth, and may the glory of God fill you with praise, the beauty of Christ strengthen you in service, and the power of the Holy Spirit fill you with peace. Alleluia. 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 Amen. Amen. And Maureen would like to sing 
a closing uh, hymn. Nice and sweet. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, forever waves of grain, for purple mountain majesties. Blessed Church, may you have a wonderful holiday. May you feel Christ's peace surrounding you. May you know the power of the Holy Spirit. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you tomorrow evening.